The Second World War ended for the 58 survivors aboard German submarine U-505 on June 4, 1944, about 150 miles from Rio de Oro, Western Sahara. She was the first enemy vessel seized at sea by the United States Navy since the War of 1812. Since 1954, the Type 9C U-boat has been an exhibit, now indoors in some 35,000 square feet, at Chicago's wonderful Museum of Science and Industry on the south side of the city. I actually got to personally tour the submarine when I was in Chicago in around 2012, and the main thing that stuck with me was just how cramped the U-boat was. Over the years, I have wondered about U-505 and its path. Americans often lose sight of the fact that on December 8, 1941, Adolf Hitler ordered Grand Admiral Eric Raider's Kriegsmarine to target United States ships as well as vessels of Central and South American countries who expressed support for the United States after Imperial Japan's attack on Pearl Harbor. This was three days before Nazi Germany's actual declaration of war on December 11th. Since the Third Reich had a very limited surface fleet, which was shown in the sinking of the battleship Bismarck by the Royal Navy the previous May, and also ran tremendous risk undertaking long-range voyages, the task of taking the war to American shipping fell to the submarine force. Warfare by U-boat was the dream of Admiral Karl Donitz, commander of Germany's U-boat arm, who had served as a submarine captain during the First World War. Prior to U.S. entry into the conflict, he had already faced the none-too-easy mission of strangling Britain's ability to wage war through submarine blockade. In fact, Donitz had expanded the offensive perimeter against the United Kingdom in April 1941 by sending his vessels deep into the Central Atlantic. Now eight months later, he faced the awesome challenge of devastating American shipping as well. Initially, Donitz's submarine fleet scored triumph after triumph. The year 1942 would prove to be a time of tremendous peril for the Allied war effort when the German Navy appeared to be the arm of Hitler's armed forces which might swing the balance in favor of the Axis powers. Donuts could draw on recently completed subs like U-505. Commissioned in late August 1941, it was built by workers employed by the Hamburg-based Deutsche Werf, a firm which in peacetime constructed merchant ships. Weighing over 1,100 tons, about 200 feet long, 22 feet in width, and able to dive several hundred feet, it was one of the technological terrors of the first half of the 20th century. Two saltwater-cooled diesel engines, each with 2,170 horsepower, propelled the craft. As a Type 9C, U-505 had a range of almost 17,000 miles, meaning it could show up in the most unexpected places for merchant vessels. Patrols could actually last 100 days or more. While it could make 18 knots on the surface, the best that could be achieved below the surface was only 8 knots. When submerged, it was extremely vulnerable to faster pursuers. When it settled on a target, the submarine could bring to bear its six 20-inch torpedo tubes, where four were in the bow and two in the stern. On board were 22 of these ship killers. U-505 also had a 4.1-inch deck gun and two anti-aircraft guns, a 20mm and a 37mm. Conditions for the crew hardly generate envy among students of the Second World War. While the Type 9C was larger than earlier types and could transport some 60 men, lack of space always dogged crew members. Only one sailor could stand in the tiny kitchen at a time. Bunk rotating could not be avoided because the Kriegsmarine provided a mere 35 bunks. All provisions, such as eggs, cheese, rice, noodles, dried potatoes, canned and preserved meats, coffee and beer, eventually tasted like the diesel fuel that fed the engines. To call life on board unsanitary would be a massive understatement, as the smells associated with inadequate body hygiene commingled with diesel fumes. Moreover, it was a seemingly endless time to go without seeing daylight or breathing fresh air. Once completed, U-505 was not rushed into combat. From late August 1941 until well into January 1942, intensive training with the 4th U-boat flotilla claimed all of the time of the crew. 
absolute mastery of all instruments aboard, division of responsibilities, diving, the techniques of assault on surface ships, drills for torpedo failure, how to avoid detection, and what to do if attacked and damaged comprise central goals, life or death goals, of the instruction. Then, shortly after the start of the new year, in mid-January, U-505, under the command of Axel Lowe, set out on its first mission, circumnavigating the British Isles and arriving in France. This it did. The sub's new home was now Lorient in Brittany. There was little time to waste, however. Mission 2 awaited. On February 11, 1942, Lowe and the U-505 embarked on their second mission. Its destination was the waters off the coast of West Africa. This U-boat had finally joined the Battle of the Atlantic. This patrol of 86 days was quite successful. U-505 sank four ships, one American, one British, one Norwegian, and one Dutch. The U.S. craft, the cargo ship West Irmo, was struck by one of the U-boat's 21-inch torpedoes on April 3, 1942, about 300 miles southwest of Ghana. These victims of U-505 were among the more than 1,100 Allied ships brought down by Donut submarine arm in 1942 alone. If it was a happy time for Donut's men and their Führer, 1942 was a year of incredible danger for U.S. and British leaders. Through gigantic technological and organizational innovations, the Allies turned the proverbial tide in the Battle of the Atlantic in 1943. And those innovations would make Atlantic patrols an especially fraught venture for the crew of U-505 well before the capture of the sub in June 1944, which we will explore further another time. Thanks for watching. Remember to like the video and subscribe for more content.